If you are ready to learn a little bit about webhooks, look no further than this video. I'm gonna be using webhooks in tandem with Airtable and we're gonna be building step by step exactly how you can set up a webhook and pass information to it so that you can trigger your automations. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, do check out our website and don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's gonna get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's jump into my screen here and we are talking about webhooks. Webhooks work exceptionally well with Airtable because we can pass a lot of unique information along. So I'm gonna be building a webhook here from scratch and it's all about setting up that trigger. So really quickly, before we get into it, you know, a lot of times when you go to make a new Zap in Zapier, you will you know, already connect to a certain app. You'll say, hey, when this condition is met in this program or what, whatever the case may be. But for us, we're going to imagine that we wanna build some sort of automation that isn't already supported with a pre-baked trigger. So for that, webhooks is kind of where it's at. Now you'll notice that this is a premium feature of Zapier. So webhooks by Zapier are a premium thing, but if you're on a paid Zapier plan, which I strongly recommend you are on, then you will have this access. So we're gonna start by you know, selecting that webhooks by Zapier as our trigger event. And you'll notice that we get three different uh, you know, selections here. Now the, the big two buckets are retrieve poll, that's the top one, or a catch hook. The big difference here, a retrieve poll is not an instant zap, it's not an instant trigger. What a retrieve poll does is it, it goes out and it looks every so often at this URL. Depending on your plan, it'll look more frequently if you pay more. And it goes out and it looks and sees if any new information has been received and if it has been, then it does its magic. Most of the time what we want to do is push a button or somehow initiate that automation. And so for this, using a catch hook is where it's at. The other nice thing about a catch hook is it's instantaneous. So as soon as we push that button, it triggers this thing to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use the catch hook. I'm not gonna worry about the raw hook. This just you know parses out a little bit more stuff that we're not gonna need for this. So we're gonna go with that standard catch hook and continue. Now, what Zapier does, it automatically creates a unique URL for us. Now, this is our webhook, our custom webhook URL, and it is specific to this automation. So when you create your own, your URL is going to be unique, obviously, for your trigger. And then you'll also notice a couple of, of uh, drop downs here. We have the ability to either uh, allow this to be caught with an empty body, which doesn't usually produce uh, any results for us. So we're going to not do that. And then we're also going to uh, choose a child key if we so choose. In this case, I'm going to skip this, leave it blank. These are not required. So Really what we do, if we copy this URL, this would be the next step I would do from Airtable. If we want to initiate this automation from Airtable, just copy that URL, go into your database and create a webhook URL field. And we're going to use a formula field type for this. And inside of here, either inside double or single quotes, you can paste that URL. Once you've created this field, every record is gonna have this same URL. So I'm gonna make sure to name this webhook URL. And you'll see that this is going to be, of course, identical for every record. Every time we add a record, it's automatically gonna get that webhook in here. Now this is really convenient because in the future, if you ever choose to change that webhook address, you can do that and you only need to come in here and fix this formula to reflect the changes in your address. Okay, so now we can move on with our automation. Let's take that webhook URL again, and I'm just gonna paste it in here, pasting it into my browser and hitting enter. You see when I do that, it's sending, it's initiating this hook. And over here, if I try to continue, I will say test trigger. And it's not going to find anything. You see, it can't find a request. And the reason for this is, we did not allow it to accept a request with an empty body. 
we actually need to pass some information along with this webhook. So let's do that. Without even messing with Airtable yet, I'm going to go in here and pass some parameters inside of this webhook. So maybe I want to say question mark my name equals, and I'll just put Gareth here. So now if I hit enter, first I'm going to copy this so I don't lose it, and I'm going to hit enter, and it's just gone to this web address, right? Inside of Zapier now, I can come down and try to catch this hook. We're going to test that trigger, and there it is. It's now found that webhook, and you see that it's broken out this parameter. It's, it's received this data, and it's calling it my name, and it has the output of Gareth. Now I can add to this, right? So let's go in here and I will say ampersand last name equals pronovost, right? I'll hit enter again. And now if I flip back into Zapier, it should catch, whoops, I'll need to pull and load in new data here. So let's go ahead and load more. And it now sees the, the most recent of those. So now it's been able to parse out two different pieces of data that it received inside of the URL. So all I'm doing is I'm adding this data, I'm tagging it on to the end of this URL using this syntax. The first piece after the webhook, you know, so the first chunk here needs to be that webhook, right? And it ends with the slash. After that, question mark, give the, uh, give the first parameter a name, whatever you're gonna call that, whatever its ID is, and then equals, and then the parameter. Or, or the data that you're that you're passing through. Then the next part here is an ampersand and then another name or ID and then equal sign and then whatever other data you want to pass. Now this can go indefinitely, right? I could say uh, birth month equals October. Enter. I can continue adding these parameters on at the end here and every new piece of data that I choose to pass will get picked up by that webhook. And now we can build whatever we want with our automation. So for our example today, we actually want to set up a button or a webhook inside of Airtable so that when we push it, then we are gonna send a Slack message. Now, this may be something that we could have done any number of ways, but the webhook is nice and instantaneous and it's going to allow us to set this up much more quickly and easily. So let's get to work. So I have my webhook URL. Now we need to talk about what data do we need to pass inside of this automation in order for it to do what we want. Now let's imagine that these parameters that I'm passing right now are exactly what we want to pass. So I'll need a first name, whoops, and we'll make this first name, and I will need a last name, And of course, I will need a birth month. Uh, let's see, maybe we'll do this in a single select field. So in here, I'll put in one person. I'll, put, I'll use myself again as an example. And really quickly, let me drop into my uh, single select field and I'll just create the different months. Now that I have those, I'll get them in the right order and save it. And we'll just kind of wrap this up by making this a full name here. And I'll use a concatenate formula to combine first and last name. And now we're gonna fill out some blank data all throughout this, uh, this table. So let's just imagine that we have a couple people in here. Sadly, I don't know when Doc Holliday was born, so sorry about that. I'll make this up as I go. All right, so now we have four people in our database. Each of them has their own first name. Each of them has a birth month. And we don't even need to necessarily see this webhook URL. It's gonna run in the background when we build out our formula. So let's go ahead and hide it for now. And what we need to do is adjust that URL so that we're adding on these extra pieces of information, the first name, the last name, and the birth month, just as we did when we were doing it manually here in, by individually typing out these different pieces of data. So we need to build a formula that supports this so that it supports each one of our records. So let's go ahead and bring up a formula 
And the best formula for this, in my opinion, is a concatenate formula. And we're going to start with the webhook URL. Now, if I stop right here and I save this field, you, we are going to see just a duplication of that webhook field. But I want to add parameters that make each of these records unique. So I'm going to rename this field as my unique webhook because it's unique for each record. And coming in here, I'm going to go ahead and start passing along this data, right? So the first thing I need to do after the webhook URL is add a comma in my formula. And then I'm going to put a question mark and I'll say, I'll call it first name this time, equals and then first name. And here I need to be sure to include a uh, some quotations where I want to bring in text. So really quickly, everywhere that I want to have static text, I'm using it inside of quotation marks. And everywhere that I want to bring in a dynamic field, I don't need those quotation marks and instead I reference a field. There has to be commas that are separating these pieces as well. So if I save right now, what I'm going to get is a unique URL that, uh, that is bringing in the first name with an equal sign and the first name that is unique to each person. Now I can continue to expand on this by bringing in the last name and the birth month as well. So comma, quotation, last name equals, quotation, comma, last name field, comma, quotation, question mark, birth month, quotation, comma, and then we'll bring in the birth month. So now we have a unique URL for each person, and it's taking their information that is unique to that record, and it's going to pass it to Zapier. So let's close out the, the webhook uh, URL where we were manually putting this data in, and let's push one more piece of information into our, uh, our test. So I'm going to click this webhook. It opens up this URL in another page. And that's fine. I can close it out. I'm going to go back into Zapier now and I'm going to call this web or I'm going to check this webhook one more time and see if I can load that most recent uh, data push. And here I have this new request that it received three seconds ago. If I look at this, we see we have one long string. So obviously I missed something in my syntax. Let's go back into that webhook and see what I goofed on. Question mark first name equals that looks right. Oh, I missed my ampersand here. I need to have that ampersand after the first parameter. So the first parameter is always going to have the question mark and then everyone after that needs that ampersand. So let's go ahead and save that. Try it one more time. I'll try to pass a uh, Wyatt Earp this time. And let's go into Zapier and call it one last time and see if we can get it to load appropriately. All right, we are now missing something here on the birth month. So one more time back into our database. Let's make sure that we have the right equal sign here. Oh. All right, so as you can see, definitely a little bit more advanced, a little difficult to write these formulas sometimes, especially doing it on the fly, but I think we finally got it all set up. Let's try one last time with Doc Holiday. Pass that, see if we can bring in Doc Holiday now, and it should correctly parse out all that data. Let's take a look. Perfect, all right. So we received Doc, Holiday, and July as his information. Let's now build the next part of our automation. We can use those three data pieces however we would like in our automation. So for me, I'm going to build a Slack chat here and we are going to send a message to a specific channel in Slack. Let's continue. And dropping in here, I just need to pick my, uh, my proper Slack channel, continue again. And here's where I pick that channel. So we've got a bunch of different channels here, but I built one specifically for this webhook automation. So flipping into my Slack, I just have a blank channel here where I'm going to be sending these messages. So I want to uh, bring in the text message here. So I can say something like message alert. And then I can say first name is. And here's where I can start bringing in these parameters. So I can bring in that first name that was found in the webhook and it will be different every time. Now, last name is. Bring in holiday, birth month is, and we'll find that last piece of data here. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and push this out into Slack and run a test and review. 
and flip over into Slack, and we see that we've got this, uh, this came in as follows. So we can even come in here and re, uh, or dr drop right into our, our automation and make changes if we need to. Now, personally, I don't like sending this URL because I don't necessarily want everyone who receives this message to be able to go in and, and uh, change that. So I usually turn this off when I'm building these automations. In order to do that, we can go in and turn off this include a link to the zap. So I'll say no here. And auto expand links, uh, probably not relevant, but I'll say no here as well. And we should be good to go here. So let's go ahead and turn this automation on. And we are going to just give it a couple tests. So inside of here, as I mentioned, the cool thing about webhooks is it's instantaneous. So let's see if we pass this data on to our uh, Slack channel as quickly as I hope we do. Let's go ahead and push on Johnny Ringo here and flip into Slack and see if we don't get a message pretty quickly. All right, so it took a little longer than I had hoped for. It looked like there was a bit of a stall in the automation, but we still see that we're not getting that birth month pulled in correctly. So one more edit, let's jump back into the automation and see where things are going awry. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't load more data, see if I can pull this in one more time. So I do have that birth month getting passed. So let's see why it's not getting uh, distributed correctly in the Slack channel. Coming on down here, let's see if I can't just go back in and pull our options in one more time. All right, so before, unfortunately, I had accidentally named this query string birth month August, and so I need to make sure that I'm accessing the right query string. And so I need to make sure I'm just going for that query string birth month. And so that is the problem there. We were not passing query string August or birth month August. We were passing birth month. So now we should have that mapped appropriately. Let's go ahead and give that one more test and then we'll turn this automation on, make sure that it comes in as we expect. There's the birth month. All right, so now our webhook is working properly. And to really kind of add some extra icing to the cake here, you might, instead of having this funky looking uh, webhook, this URL just floating inside your database, make this a little sexier by dressing it up in a button field. So instead of using just the URL field, use a button field. And the really great part about this is we can just use a URL inside of here. So really quickly, I'm just gonna put a placeholder here and I'm going to come inside of my formula that I've already built. I'm gonna copy it and I'll paste it into this button field. And now just by pushing the button, let's say we push it for myself again, it will open up that URL and in theory, post that information inside of Zapier. So very cool, instantaneous automation. And to take this one step further, you can also disable your button when certain conditions are not met. Now this of course requires a slightly more fancy formula, but you can write some logic inside of your formula that says if conditions are not met, be blank. Otherwise, if they are met, then and only then do I wanna use or make this button viable. So this is a great way that you can make sure that the button doesn't get pushed accidentally, but it's only getting pushed when you actually want to initiate that automation. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.